What's up Outdoorsman, Greg here, and today I'm going over everything you need to know to modify a set of climbing spurs to hunt with your tree saddle. Before we get into our climbing spur setup, something just doesn't feel right. Ah, much better. Now, I'm not going to go over exactly how I would use climbing spurs. My buddy Fling and Arrows just did a fantastic job on that. So check out his video. I'll link to that in the description below. He tells you exactly how to set up um, your spurs, how to climb with them. He demonstrates how fast you can do it. He does a great job, so I'm not going to mess with that video. However, I am going to show you how I modify these to make them work for saddle hunting. These are Gecko Carbon Fiber climbing spurs. These are really high end, but you don't have to go that high end to get a good pair. I started with Climrite aluminum ultralight uh, climbing spurs. They're not quite as light as these. They work just as well. Uh, I upgraded to these after I sold a bunch of gear I wasn't using just because I wanted the most ultralight system I could find. Some of the pros of climbing with climbing spurs. You can climb pretty much any tree in the woods. Doesn't matter if it has branches, uh, it doesn't matter if it's big, if it's small, if it can hold your weight, you can pretty much climb it with a set of climbing spurs. Now there are some trees that work better for climbing spurs than, other, than others, but it doesn't mean you can't climb them. They just may have noisy bark or like a pine tree, you may get pitch all over your spikes, which I don't prefer to climb pine trees, but you can. If the pine tree is the only tree that you had in the woods and it was right where it needed to be to kill that buck, you could definitely climb a pine tree with these spurs. Something else I like about these spurs, they pack so small. I mean, look at that. I can climb any tree in the woods with that right there. I mean, and I can get as high as I want. I can hunt 10 feet off the ground or 50 feet off the ground. It, it doesn't matter. I can climb any tree in the woods to whatever height I want. That is one of the benefits of using climbing spurs. Some of the cons of climbing spurs, they do damage the tree. They do leave a small little hole in the tree, but so do screw-in steps, so do screw-in bow holders, so do climbing stands. How much they damage the tree is up for debate. Some people say they're basically like as bad as a chainsaw. Some people think it's no worse than a woodpecker hole. Guess who? <laughs> I don't really know. I'm not a botanist, I'm not a scientist. Uh, all I have is anecdotal evidence from, from hunters that I respect and know and also my own experience is overusing them for the past few years that they don't cause that much damage to the tree. But that's something you have to decide for yourself. So that's a con though. They do definitely damage the tree, which means they're not legal in every state. Figure that out on your own. They're noisy right out of the box. If you don't quiet them down, they're very noisy. These came with big, huge Velcro straps. That's a no-go. Uh, and they have metal buckles on the, the the lower straps that were just not going to work. And, you know, they're kind of cumbersome with those OE, uh, OEM, the factory um, attachment methods. Kind of cumbersome. Not my favorite way to do it. So I'm going to show you how to make your spurs better and set them up perfectly for saddle hunting. First thing you're going to want to do is change out the straps. I added just a simple buckle on the top, one and a half inch buckle. Uh, I sewed that on. It was really easy. Just cut off the Velcro straps or whatever your spurs came with. If they came with leather pads and straps, you can get rid of those. Sew on some uh, webbing straps. Use a simple quick release buckle and it'll be good to go. Secondly, I changed out the bottom straps as well. And this is a, a really simple mod that I did. Sewed on a loop, a webbing strap with a simple adjustment buckle. You loop it around your foot, clip it on, tighten it down, you're good to go. Those are super important to change those out, and it's really easy to do uh, if you have a sewing machine or you could even go to a sew shop and get it done uh, for probably not very much money. I am not a seamstress by any stretch, but I was able to do this in about 20 minutes, so it's not that hard to do. Second thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to add stealth strips or some sort of camo tape or hockey tape, something to silence them down and also camouflage them. I hang these on the back side of the tree when I hunt, so I don't want them sticking out. So any sort of reflective metal surfaces, you're gonna wanna cover that with something. I'm a big fan of these cell strips. I mean, they look awesome, they work great, they quiet everything down, and they're just fantastic. And this adhesive uh, or, or this cloth camo tape is great as well. I'm a big fan of that. That's what I, I use and it works absolutely perfectly. 
Finally, get rid of those stock leather spike covers. They're junk. They're not gonna last more than one hunt. I make my own out of Instamorph. It's a pretty simple process. You just put the Instamorph in hot water, and as soon as it turns clear, it's ready to be used, and you mold it around the spikes. It's not that difficult to do. It just takes a few minutes, a little bit of trial and error. It doesn't even have to be perfect. Mold it around the spikes. I choose to use a little rubber gear tie with it, uh, that works for me, but you could do it a number of different ways. Uh, this is a simple mod. And then once you're done and happy with how they fit over the spikes, you simply drop them in cold water, wait for them to turn opaque, and they are ready to be used. And you could even make them super high speed after the fact. You could go in and paint them. You could sand them down, make them nice and smooth and look professional. I don't really care. Uh, I kind of like the white, that way if I ever drop them, I won't lose them. Some people I know are putting uh, camo tape over them, camouflage them. I don't put these on in the tree. These actually stay on the ground when I climb a tree. They either go in my pack or they stay on the ground and just wait for me to climb back down. But I, I, I like them white with a nice bright green strap, that way I can find them and I don't lose them. This is a super important mod. The spike cover that comes with these, no matter what you buy, they're junk. There are some aftermarket options you can buy, uh, but the Instamorph is a really cool DIY project and it's cheap. You can get a bag of Instamorph on Amazon for not very much money and uh, I've made five sets so far out of Instamorph and I probably have half the bag left. So it goes a long way and there's lots of other uses for it. I'm gonna put links to all the products that I used in the description so you guys can just grab them off Amazon. Super cheap, super easy to do. So I think that's about it to wrap things up. Climbing spurs, they're a great tool to have in your rucksack. They're not for everyone, they're not legal on all public land, so make sure you're following the rules and make sure that, you know, you do the research and you decide for yourself whether you're okay with using these on live trees. But they are an absolutely fantastic way to hunt. Hopefully this little video helped you, uh, give you some ideas on things you can do to make them even better than they are. And then, you know, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check out some of my other hunting and fishing videos. I've got a whole bunch of them, and I certainly appreciate you guys watching, taking the time to check out my channel. And remember that if nothing else, make sure you go outside and go fishing and hunting and hiking and hammocking and backpacking and rock climbing. Do anything you got to do, just get outdoors. <laughs>